Well, hello, hello, General Hospital Daily Recap fans. Today's Daily Recap is for Friday, December the 8th, 2023. Friday, December the 8th. Well, this was a fill-in. This was a nothing episode. So let's get to the nothingness. Okay, Tracy is on her way home from Amsterdam. She's saddened. She's crying looking at pictures of Luke and her, and she said, oh, Luke, I miss you so much. So she even decides on the plane, she has to put her sunglasses on and put her head on to hide the fact that she's crying, you know, sobbing. So I thought, okay, Tracy's coming back. They're not ready to write Bobby's character off just yet. And you know what? They can do that whenever they want, if they want, you know? I mean... I'm not mad at them. There's there's no reason that they have to address a, a Bobby storyline right now. So, you know, we, we will see that when we see that. But now we know Tracy's home. She's going to be wreaking some havoc on everybody around because right now she's miserable. And when she's miserable, she likes everyone else to share in her misery as well. She really does. She likes everybody to just be with her. So one good thing is she's going to come home and Ned is going to be Ned again. And let's see if she's going to be happy about that. You know, Ned is going to be Ned again. And how much do you want to bet everybody? Tracy's going to be all off into ELQ business, right? Offering all kinds of suggestions telling Ned what Michael shouldn't have shouldn't see when she was there all those months did Tracy want Tracy ran ELQ before did Tracy once go to the office did she once look at ELQ con nothing not at all but now all of a sudden she gonna be all off in it knee deep you know probably driving Ed, Ned to wish he was still Eddie so we'll see what kind of havoc Tracy is getting ready to cause. Um, this was so cute. Violet picked the ugliest tree on the lot because she felt no one else probably would. And she said it was special. And my thing is looking at it, you see how it's all lopsided there? You know, you cut that off. Cut that top part off. And that tree would have been straight. <laughs> You know, looking at it right there, cute little tree, just cut that part off that don't belong. So they put the lights on, then they end up decorating it with the ornaments. It turned out okay. And they're saying that, you know, it's perfect for their little house and, you know, Violet's showing compassion. So, you know, good lesson for her. Good little, it's just on my face. Good little lesson for Violet. There's some dead skin there, everybody. I don't like that. That's going to be bugging me the whole time. So anyway, okay, what, look, everybody, we're going to ignore that, even though I'm going to have a hard time, hard time ignoring it, but uh, we'll ignore it. Well, guess who couldn't ignore that? Gone. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so Violet said she had a Christmas, Christmas present for everybody. And they're like, what? So she goes to the back room. And Chase has this look like, I know what's going to happen. And they're like, uh, you seem eerily like you know what's about to happen. And he goes, I cannot confirm or deny. So she comes back with her guitar and she hands it to Uncle Chase. And she goes, I wrote a song for you all. And he plays it while she sings a cute little song. But here's, here's the kicker. Little, the actress playing Little Violet really does write her own music. She's starting early. I saw her in, goodness, it's been over a year, over a year, uh, that Maurice Bernard had her on State of Mind. And she played a song on State of Mind that she wrote. She loves writing music, singing her own songs, playing the guitar, very talented, talented. She's a, she's, what do you call that? A triple threat very talented triple threat so i'm looking forward to a lot of 
things coming from this young lady, you know, throughout her life. Um, hopefully she has a lot of parental involvement because in the entertainment industry, you need it. You need it to be great. You need that so that they could stay grounded. You know, the parents need to be able to remember to keep them humble. My daughter was a, a tween actress. Um, she started acting, she probably got her first role when she was about 10. So she was doing commercials and, and some guest appearances on TV shows from about 10 to about, I would say, 16. And then when they reached 16, they get into competition with the adults that are over 18 and can play 16 because they can work them longer hours. See, minors, there's rules. You got to have a certain amount of rest breaks and, and all kinds of things and over definite overtime rules with adults, no. So it got real slow right there about 16 and then she was doing mainly uh, more commercial work. But anyways, off topic. But I was there, look, to talk about stage mom. Oh, that was me. Everywhere she went, I went. Stage mom, definitely. So I'm just looking so forward to seeing more from this triple threat. Um, then we had Arthur Quartermain's. Um, Lois was making a ruckus that the house hadn't been decorated. I guess Lila had a tradition back in the day that by December 1st, the house was decked. It started December 1st and it had to be decked by the end of that day. So she had the whole staff and as much of the family involved as she could. So Olivia and her went out and got a tree and, you know, Cody brought it in and they got some of the ornaments from the attic and they did garland on the staircase. They couldn't do very much. But Olivia said, you know, Monica wasn't too into really going all out with the house. So she had to pretty much, you know, it's Monica's house. She had to do Monica's rules. So she says, so yeah, we have a tree, and but we don't go all out. So Lois said, Monica ain't here. She's at a conference, you know? So she goes, you're right. So they're going all out and just having cats meowing it, right? Drinking, having fun. Cody had fun, you know, helping them decorate the high stuff and, and everything. And who comes walking in the door at the end of the show? But the Grinch-ish that sold Christmas. Yeah, we're talking about Tracy. Soon as she walks in the door and sees the gar the ornaments going up the stairs, right? Garland going up the stairs. Oh, no. No. And she goes walking in and Lois and, um, and Olivia look at each other like, oh, no, she's back. So Tracy, like I said, Tracy is going to want everybody to be as miserable as she is, and she's getting ready to do just that. She's getting ready to do just that. So we have, uh, let's see, Anna, I love this. Anna goes over, she gives Valentina courtesy. See, I wouldn't have given him even that courtesy in person. I would have texted him. See, because with that text, that would have been less personal. And that's all he deserved. She let him know that there's proof Charlotte did not burn down her house. And then Valentina is, she insisted she didn't do it. And he says, now why didn't I believe my daughter? And I said, because she's a pathological liar. That's why you didn't believe her. If she had done it, she would have told you she did not. And Anna said, that's because you know the other thing she had done, Valentine. You had no way of knowing she was telling you the truth. Charlotte needs help. You need to get her the help that she needs. And he had the, you, what makes you think you're the authority on what my daughter needs? And Anna said, well, what she definitely doesn't need is some you enabling her. She don't need that because she's only going to get worse. And he goes, not Victor, Victor, you know, had her under, he's, he's controlling her. 
He warped her mind, she says, exactly, Valentine, and you still don't know what to what extent Charlotte needs serious help. Well, what she did, she did none of it out of malice. Whoa, whoa. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, malice. Get rid of Anna. See, it's malice towards Anna with the misguided, with the misguided emotion, direction, or whatever you want to call it, of protecting her father. Valentine said, little, my young daughter, I admire, she goes, I admire Charlotte's courage. And Anna says, what do you mean? My teenage daughter to protect me was going up against super spy Anna Devane. And Anna looked at him and said, and look where that got her. I would have punched him in the gut. Anna should have given him a super spy and a kick to the gut. Because Anna told him, because he goes, she goes, have you even really talked to her about it? She is recovering from a gunshot wound from being shot by you. And she said, and it never would have happened had you told me the truth. And then he, I know, and I take full responsibility. And I'm thinking, no, you don't. By the way, the accusatory way you were talking about by being shot by you. He goes, Anna, you never go into a situation to where you go into it and you shoot first without truly knowing your target. She goes, uh, he goes, so you must have a, you must have known or thought you knew who was in your apartment and you were ready, you were ready to take them down. She says, yeah, exactly. And he says, who was it? She goes, oh no, need to know bases and you don't need to know. You don't have a right to know. But who it wasn't was Charlotte because there is no way I could have ever imagined your daughter would be in my apartment. And so Valentine, he he just looked and I thought, you know what? They're all while he's doing his accusatoryness to her, they should have written or you know, written in the script. Let's talk about what really happened that night. See, Valentine called her before he took the teenagers out trick-or-treating telling her to be safe. And she said, I, I will be. And what did she tell Valentine, everybody? She says, I'm armed. And you want to know what Valentine told her? Good. Anna should have thrown that in his face right then and there. You knew I was armed. You knew it. You know your daughter has been terrorizing me for months. Why did you did you leave her unaccompanied? See, I knew how to turn things around. I had to turn that around on him so fast. How could you not have her in your sights at all times? Valentine. Because you should have known she would be coming after me again. So now, now you live with that while I live with the fact that I actually pulled the trigger on uh, somebody that was cloaked, couldn't see their face and turned around with an object in their hand. You know, doggone right, I'm going to shoot. So anyway, she just pretty much told him, no, she wasn't backing off. No, she needs some serious help. See, because what the length that she went to terrorize me, Valentine, that is not normal. No, I know it's not normal, but that Victor Cassida, that's what she goes, wait a minute. She's like, no, no. 
Victor is dead. No. There comes a point in time when she has to know right and wrong. And she's proven herself. She goes, he goes, and that's and that's what Anna meant. She goes, you need to do put her in a place that all that Victor madness is, is wiped out of her head. Right? Because they don't know what else that Victor told her to do. Oops, oops, oops. Victor could still be speaking to Charlotte through her little tarot cards. So no, no. Anyway, Anna just leaves. It's like, you know, there is there is nothing, no them, no sh nothing. Because he still wants to kind of leave it open. She goes, no, 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 we are done. We're through and can never be again because of what the, the events that happened, you know? So anyway, now then we had, now, I appreciated this scene between Molly, Christina, and TJ. Because Molly came right on out. And she admitted just the ugliness, the rudeness, the way they treated Christina, her and TJ. And they both gave Christina a heartfelt apology. Because she did not deserve it. And Christina said, Malls, you know what? You were right, though. I was acting completely impulsive with my offer. I hadn't even thought it through. And you were fresh off of the news that you had. She goes, I was insensitive. And I was coming in to be the hero. Because finally, this was something I could do. You know, she said, but a lot of time has gone by. No, no. I have had time to really seriously think this through. And you and I have been working on our relationship. She goes, I know exactly what I'm getting myself into. I've grown. You know, we've grown. And I think now is the, is the right time. So, you know, they they talk it out and I mean you know not talk it out you know she really hears her sister's apology which is what needed to have happened and Molly said it was all about me to find out and it's true that I will never be able to carry my own child it was devastating to me just devastating and then I'm so used to being able to control everything. And one thing, Christina, that she told her, one thing I've learned with the first experience with, I think, Andrea or the other surrogate, maybe it was Andrea, is that I can't control what's going to happen in a pregnancy. See, I just knew. The surrogate got pregnant right away. Things were going, I, I was controlling all of that. When I None of that was in my control. She said that was a very important lesson for me because of the statistics of possible miscarriage, you know, amongst women. Because truth be told, pretty much most of us women who have children and multiple children, children, we've lost one. I know I had a miscarriage, 16, 16 weeks, you know, and most have here. Are the, it just happens biologically. And she says, now I know even with you carrying our child that I can't control that, Christina. I can't control the outcome. And I'm thinking, good, because if something happens, don't you blame your sister. You should not have had that chocolate bar. <laughs> you know, don't blame your sister. So anyway, that was it, everybody. Like I said, nothing major happening today. It was really a continuation of everybody doing their Christmas tree shopping and conversating and talking along the way. Nothing major. Okay, so let's go to Comment Corner. Comment Corner. Coretta says, Mr. Brennan didn't get the flowers from the hotel room. He said on his way... He said on his way back to Kelly's, he saw them. Is that what he said? And when Carly refused them, he said uh, they would just go to waste in his hotel. Oh, see? Okay. 
you know what, Coretta, I like your version of that story because I could have half been listening to that. Thank you so much. See, that's what Comic Corner is all about. Yolanda said, spoilers say a new guy with Carly. Say the new guy with Carly is Dex's dad. Oh, could be. I could see that. Well, Dex is a little short, but you know what? I could see that. I mean, they have yet to give Dex a storyline. And I think part of us always felt that Dex was a plant from somewhere. But we'll see. We'll see how they're going to write that up. Denzel says, I hope that part, it ain't true. It ain't true, though. I, you know, because that'll really be a problem for Jocelyn. I mean, that, I, I hope not either. Yeah. Hello there says, I actually thought it was the guy working with Brennan, the skinnier uh, looking guy who visited Sunny in his office a few times. Maybe Dex doesn't really know who he is but somehow he does have experience with securities coretta says carly has been with sunny's enemies before i hope this time um isn't any different because carly has more chemistry with him than she does with drew m i m o in, in my in my opinion i figured that one out Lisa says, that Brennan guy is really trying to get Carly to be his new friend. Why would he have flowers in his hotel room and take them to Carly? What a charmer. Uh, Carly's radar is up. It shouldn't be, uh, it shouldn't be, it should be. Uh, it should be too. He is creepy, cute, but creepy. Yes, truth. But woo, eerily, especially the way he was looking through those panes, everybody. I was like, I'm scared of you, right? And Lisa says, wow, Curtis will walk again. I guess it depends on the spinal damage he has. P. Merle says, yes. Can we please get that fine griffin <laughs> or even Andre to perform the surgery? Lisa says, Someone will tell Valentine that Charlotte did not burn down Anna's house. She did it, did the other stuff, but not burning down the house. Well, Anna told Valentine today. P. Merle says, why let him, why? Let him think the worst of her. Maybe he'll then get Charlotte some badly needed help. I know. See, now he's really going to sweep it under the rug. Lisa said, Diane is already signed with the family. I guess Gregory doesn't understand that. I know Gregory was out of line, out of line and out of place. Um, if an attorney is retained by a family, she's supposed to represent them when needed. She can't just say, oh, I'm sorry, but I like Finn um, and I can't go against him in court. I know. Sabrina says, hi, Daily Recap Lady, love Diana Robert. The whole Finn story is a waste of time. Yes, it is a complete waste of time. Alexis does not have her law license when she helped the girl in prison with her, well, but she gave her tips on how to get her parole hearing to go smoothly. I don't believe she had it when she helped Sean. No, she didn't. But she knows how to I could go to Alexis today and say, look, I need to know what papers I need to file to get a divorce. And she could tell you step A to Z, what I could go do and get it done. Doesn't mean she's representing me or practicing law. <laughs> you know, if she's now going to represent me in that divorce hearing, now that's a problem. She can't be a legal, legal advocate without having a license, but she can give an opinion. She could definitely give an opinion. And everybody that has gone to Alexis asked her for her opinion. She could give it. Linda says, uh, Dante will probably have Sam or Chase go check out that locker because maybe that's where Anna's files are being held. Sandy says, according to Dante, Port Charles has been, has been invaded by a swarm of WSB agents looking for Anna. I enjoyed Marshall and Mama Ashford. P. Merle says, where was Robert and Laura when the WSB was uh, overriding the station house? 
What station? What station house? Sandy says to P. Merrill, LOL, right? What's what station house? I missed that. A user said he is the he is Pikeman with Carly. Yeah. He's he's over Pikeman. I believe that. Lucy says, Hello, recap lady. How about when Brennan asked Carly out to dinner? She said, I'm sorry, I'm seeing someone. What would have happened if Drew doesn't make it back from Australia? Carly's not going to go with, with uh, Brennan right away. I mean, it would take her some time before she would see anybody um, if something happens to Drew. But if Carly feels Brennan is up to no good, if Sonny tells her, you know, maybe he's Pikeman, maybe he's up to no good, Carly is not past getting with somebody to see if she could get the skinny, get the inside tip for Sonny. She would definitely do that. She would try to see what's going on. And then P. Merle says, please don't put wham put the whammy on Drew. Carly should not end up with this creep. No, she should not. Uh, Lucy says, P. Merle, you're right. Car Carly needs to stay with Drew. As far as I'm concerned, they both can move back to Jacksonville, Florida. <laughs> oh, goodness, Lucy. And get all romantic on the beach uh, like last time they were there. No, last time they were just giving each other little kisses and saying that felt good. <laughs> they can stay there too. And then Ron said the WSB thought they had all the information from the morgue, but they didn't. Anna and Dante will end up getting more clues and find the one that did it. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. That's it for Comment Corner, Comment Corner. I'll be back on Monday with another daily recap of General Hospital.